sugar substitutes to provide the same level of sweetness. Some sugar substitutes are low in calories and then some others have little to no calories. As a result, there is a perceived but unproven benefit to using sweeteners instead of a table sugar. You can argue all day long whether they are bad or good for you, which we will talk about. However, at the end of the day, people have a sweet tooth and occasionally wants to satisfy that sweet tooth with sweeteners instead of real sugar, which I totally understand may spike your blood sugar. If you are strict and no thank you kind of guy or no fun type of guy, you should just move on and not watch this video any further. As you know, many of the major goal or the first goal of the major goal of the diabetes is to control blood sugar stuff, right? So sweeteners sometimes can help that. But unlike sugar, sweeteners don't contribute to food decay either. So there are some benefits to them. Most of them don't raise blood sugar levels and yes, some do and especially certain ones that we will talk about. But the research that I will talk about will highlight many of the important points that you have not known before. Knowing which sweeteners are best also may be helpful if you have diabetes, prediabetes, or insulin resistance. Let's start reviewing them one by one. So, my first one is aspartame. There are two brand names that you're familiar with, Equal and NutraSweet. They're totally artificial, meaning it is not natural at all. It's a combination of two amino acids, which are aspartic acid and phenylalanine. It gives you four calories per gram, which is the same as sugar. So isn't that insane? Well, wait a minute. But the aspartame is 200 times sweeter than the sugar. Get it? So you use much less aspartame than the sugar and the calories that, that you use with the aspartame becomes negligible. So you will see aspartame in nutrition labels of many like yogurts, the chewing gum, the pudding, the soft drinks, and primarily on your table at the restaurant. So they even use it in medicine like in the cough syrups and stuff like that. So, but do not use aspartame when you are baking. It loses its sweet taste when it's heated because it is not stable in heat at all. So, when it comes to safety, the National Cancer Institute says that there is no evidence that aspartame and other sugar substitutes approved for use in the United States cause cancer or other serious health problems. Medical research studies have shown the sweeteners are safe for most people when used in moderation. Well, the question is, what is moderation? Some people bake with the sweeteners and some people use it only one time in their morning coffee. So that part is a little vague. Also, they do not say that they won't raise your blood sugar either, do they? More on that coming up later. Next on the list is saccharin. Remember the sweet and low? That is saccharin. It is 200 to 500 times sweeter than the sugar, depending on how you use it. Similar to aspartame, it provides around 3.6 calories per gram, although, as I just said, it is almost 500 times sweeter than the regular blood sugar. On the downside, some people may notice a weird metallic aftertaste when they consume the saccharin. And guess what? When used in processed foods, they eliminate that aftertaste by combining saccharin with another sugar substitute. Smart. Good thing you can bake with it. Not that I recommend doing so, but it is possible. The body does not break it down, so it is absorbed and eliminated by the kidneys, which is also not a bad thing. There has been a hype around this potential cancer thing with saccharin. However, again, the warnings have been removed as of year 2000, 21 years ago, after many research showing that that was not the case. So forget about that cancer story, okay? What about acasulfame K? By the way, next is stevia. So 
you, most of you know Stevia or love Stevia, but we'll talk on that in a, in a second. But this one is also 200 times sweeter than the table sugar. Now, you may not have heard this one too often, but manufacturers typically use it uh, this acesulfame potassium with sweeteners such as aspartame and sucralose because of the bitter aftertaste. And acesulfame K is pretty much can be found in every junk food you can imagine. So claiming a junk food is low calorie version does just not make it any better, right? Duh. <laughs> okay, sucralose is the next one. Sucralose is 600 times sweeter than the sucrose and has a pleasant sweet taste. It is quality and time intensity profile is very close to that sucrose. So no wonder why Splenda is so popular. Remember that yellow packet? Yep, that is your sucralose. Sucralose is calorie free, but Splenda also contains dextrose, a form of glucose and maltodextrin, which kind of jacks up the calorie content up to 3.36 calories per gram. Well, not bad still, considering how much sweeter it is than the sugar per gram. Will it spike your blood sugar? More on that coming up in a few minutes. Stevia, the most natural of all the sweeteners, right? The stevia, see, well, stevia is a plant, so it must be natural. But here's the deal. There is a big difference between the stevia you buy at the grocery store and the stevia that you find in nature. Stevia products found on grocery store shelves, such as the Truvia and, and so forth, but the stevia don't really have the, the stevia leaf. They're made from a highly refined stevia leaf extract called ribodiozide. They shorten it with Reb A. In reality, most stevia products have very little stevia in them. But hey, Reb A is 200 times sweeter than the table sugar. The sweeteners that they make with Reb A are called novel sweeteners because they're mixed with other sweeteners such as dextrose, which is a form of glucose, or erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. Now you're thinking that stevia products you have been buying faithfully is not really that natural, huh? Sugar alcohols are the next topic. Many sugar alcohols are there in fruits and vegetables. However, most sugar alcohols are processed from the other glucose molecules when they become a sweetener, such as the one in cornstarch. That makes it a little bit more natural than the artificial sweeteners because it comes from cornstarch, kinda, sorta. But also, the sugar alcohols are different than artificial and low calorie sweeteners in other ways. Why is that? Well, sugar alcohols, first of all, hold calories. They're just few, fewer than the simple sugar, and they're still considered nutritive. You probably heard about the xylitol. Xylitol is the most common and well-researched sugar alcohol. It is uh, common in chewing gums and oral care products, etc. Now, xylitol is about as sweet as regular sugar, but has 40% fewer calories. Besides that, it can give you some stomach upset if you consume it in large amounts. But in moderation, xylitol is fairly well tolerated. Next is erythritol, and erythritol is another sugar alcohol that actually has a great taste. And it only has 0.2 kilocalories per gram compared to the 4 calories per gram of glucose. They produce it by fermenting the glucose in cornstarch, and it has 70% of the sweetness of the sugar, but only 5% of the calories. Truvia, which is one of the popular sweetener brand, has low calorie sweetener stevia, but also has erythritol as the main ingredient. Erythritol does not have the same stomach upset that happens with other sugar alcohols because it does not get to your large intestine because it's actually absorbed way earlier in the small intestine, up to 90%, and then secreted by the kidneys gracefully. Most importantly, erythritol has little to no effect on blood sugar and blood insulin levels. As a result, it is becoming very popular sugar replacement for diabetics. Sorbitol has 
a smooth mouthfeel, which is another sugar alcohol, and a cool taste. It is 60% as sweet as the sugar, which is not that sweet with about 40% of the calories, which is not that low. So sorbitol is commonly used in the sugar-free foods and drinks as well, and it has also very little effect on blood sugar and insulin, but may cause quite a bit of digestive distress. So be prepared, because you'll have to use much more than the other sweeteners to create the same sweetness that you desire. Last but not least on that sugar alcohol topic is maltitol. It's basically a processed sugar, maltose, and it has a very similar taste and feel as the regular table sugar. Maltolol has 90% of sweetness of the regular sugar with half the calories. Mm, not sure if that's great, by the way. A, a lot of products that has maltitol claim they claim it's sugar-free, but unfortunately, your body absorbs some of the maltolol and it can lead to blood sugar spikes. Well, here are some big news about artificial sweeteners that I promised you in the beginning of the video. Are you ready? Let's talk about it. Recent studies suggest that the artificial sweeteners could actually raise your blood sugar levels more than if you indulge in sugar sweetened sodas and desserts. Wow, what? That has something to do with your gut. Didn't I tell you trust your guts before? Well, research has found that the saccharin, for example, which is sweet and low, or even sucralose, which is your glorious Splenda, and the aspartame, which is your lovely Nutra Sweet or Equal, raised blood sugar levels by dramatically changing the makeup of the gut bacteria. So what does these bacteria do anyways? Well, these lovely bacteria in your intestines help with nutrition and the immune system. There are literally trillions of them, way more than the total cells of your body. Actually, four pounds of your body weight is bacteria. So literally, we are kind of full of sh uh, Okay, I won't say, okay? So, let's see how the researchers did the study. Well, they added the artificial sweeteners that I just mentioned to the drinking water of mice. What did they find? Well, the blood sugar levels of these mice were higher than those who drank regular sugar water after consuming artificial sweeteners for a while. Also, it didn't matter if they were on low-fat or high-fat diet. Sugar rose so much that it was almost in a diabetic range. Now, these are mice, and we are not. We are humans. How does this relate to us in terms of how much sweetener that affects us? Well, they calculated that, actually. The mice fed with artificial sweeteners took in a daily amount equivalent to what humans get in about four cans of diet soda. Now, these are artificial sweeteners, not necessarily stevia or sugar alcohols. Can they also change the microorganisms in the gut? That is yet to be found out. How do they know also that it was the actually bacteria population changes all those glucose spikes? Well, because after sweetener-fed mice were given antibiotics to kill their gut bacteria, blood sugar levels returned to normal. To take it to the next level, the researchers transferred the feces from the mice that drank artificially sweetened water into mice that never had. And yes, the blood glucose also went up in those recipient mice. Can we apply this mice situation to humans? Well, researchers also studied the 400 people and they found that the gut bacteria in those people who consumed artificial sweeteners regularly differed from those who did not. People who ate artificial sweeteners also had a higher fasting blood sugar levels, which they didn't know. <laughs> so finally, they even tested seven subjects, five men and two women, 